What we're going to do here is talk about bought with a price. Like that scripture in 1 Corinthians 6.20, that you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I want to introduce you briefly here to the model of redemption that was taught for the first thousand years in the church, but has been lost for the most part to modern day Christian teaching, so-called Christian teaching. It's called the ransom model. We're doing a whole complete series up on our website. There's at least six lessons up there posted now. You can go into a thorough understanding of the history and the doctrine behind it. But here, I just want to introduce you to the models. First of all, the present model that's taught in most of the churches, and I'm not going to dwell into the different variations of these models, just to show you the, the big name preachers are all preaching this. The first they preach uh, the atonement or the reconciliation, probably atonement is what, what you'll be referred to as it's called. They teach substitution, that Jesus took your penalty on the cross, your, and the wrath of God was poured out on him, he became sin, went to hell, suffered, suffered in your place, died, rose again. The substitution or representation theory. Then there's a moral transfer that takes place. His virtue and righteousness, his obedience, his perfect obedience and his righteousness is imputed to you as your sin is imputed to him on the cross. And so now God sees you as perfectly obedient in, in uh, the sight of Christ instead of you being uh, in your sins. Then they teach, this is why they teach pre-forgiveness of sins, past, present and future sins, all forgiven in Christ. They all teach that today. And that's the reason, because that's the way they look at, at this atonement thing. As it's been done once and for all, it was a representation and a substitution. And most of them teach a reward system, so you'll never incur the condemnation at the judgment seat. And we have a message, messages up on that as well, if you want to dwell into that teaching. And of course, it all boils down to eternal security, or what was used to call perseverance of the saints. In other words, there's no condemnation for your continued sinning. The problem with this is that the early church, that the people that followed the apostles, and like I say, up to the first thousand years of the church, they taught a ransom model. And there was various versions of the ransom model because they didn't develop a systematic theology for quite a while until they codified all these things in the Reformation. But nevertheless, the ancient model has no semblance to anything that's being taught today. What it taught was that redemption was derived from Jesus coming to destroy the works of the devil, like it says in 1 John. See, all this is based on the scripture. He came to destroy the works of the devil. By his own blood, he ransomed his people from the corrupting influence of sin. As he says, you have redemption through his blood. I'll show you some of the scriptures here in a second. So, he came to destroy the works of the devil, to ransom his people from the corrupting influence of sin. As a teacher of righteousness, he set an example for you to follow after. Not a representation model, but an example. No one taught representation until this came into being, until they began to codify this, this other message. Both faith and repentance are proven by deeds and lead to this reconciliation. Reconciliation merely means returning to favor. That's what reconciliation was. No, the atonement was not invented until the 16th century. So the reconciliation was a return to favor. That happened through repentance and faith proven by deeds. Man possessed, this was, no, no one disagreed with this until Augustine, that man possessed both free will and ability to obey God and do the right thing through, the, of course, the gracious influence of, of the Spirit and all that kind of thing. So that was the two, that's the two models that we're comparing here. The model that you're presently under, the substitution representation theory, and the model that destroys the works of the devil and frees you from the corrupting influence of sin. This is the reason nobody's getting saved today. And the reason that the people that are supposedly getting saved are not coming out of their sins. So why is the difference? Which one's correct? Well, let's see what the scriptures have to say. What, where does the scriptures support this, this representation theory? In Hosea 13, 14, it says, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Hmm. There's the word. There's ransom. Mark 10, 45, in the Matthew scripture, 
He says, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.5, For there's one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. There's three scriptures that talk about the ransom. Ransom, merely redemption. That's how the early church seen redemption, as ransom. As I'll show, I'll show you here in a minute. Therefore take heed to yourself and to all the flock among whom the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God that he purchased with his own blood. He's bought with a price. What? The blood of Christ. Ransomed. Being justified through the, freely through his grace by release from ransom that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3.24 I know it says, it says redemption. You have redemption that is in Christ Jesus. But redemption means... See, the word redemption means release affected by payment of ransom. See, release affected by payment of ransom. That's what the word redemption means. It's translated in the scriptures in that manner, and one time is deliverance. So it's liberated someone from bondage by payment of a ransom. So being justified freely by his grace, through the release by ransom that is in Christ Jesus. That's how the early saints would have read that passage in Romans 3.24. And in Isaiah 52.3, it says this, it says, You have sold yourself for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. There's that word again, redeemed. So what's that word mean? Again, it, we, we gave you the, 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 the definition of that word. The definition of that word. So in the ancient Greek Bible that the early saints read, which was called the Septuagint, as we pointed out in our other lessons, that was the word for atonement. That was the word that, that they used, this ransom, this re redemption. They didn't have any word for atonement. It was reconciliation. And reconciliation means return to favor. And how, did that, how was that affected? By repentance and faith proven by deeds. All through the book of Acts, we see that. So the word redemption is always associated with a payment of a ransom in the minds of the early saints. That's the reason they taught this ransom model for so long. So Jesus becoming sin, as they try to prove in 2 Corinthians 5.21, where he became sin, to them it was a sin offering, like all the other scriptures say, which we've pointed out many times in our lessons. See, he, became, he offered himself for sin. He became a sin offering. Not he became sin. He offered himself for sin is how they would have read that in the Septuagint. So the major differences between these two teachings are absolutely glaring. See, the penal model of substitution or representation focuses on the justice of God. That's the central focus of their redemption. That God has to be reconciled to man by punishing his son in our place. And that's what almost everybody believes. Everybody believes Jesus took their place, his, their place on the cross and, and God's wrath was poured out on him. That's complete heresy. Complete heresy. So in this model, man doesn't change. God has to change. All that, all that changes with man is his status with God. Now God no longer holds him accountable for the justice because the justice has been met. The retributive justice has been met in Christ. And I know there's a teaching that, that eliminates the retributive justice, but we, we, we dwelt into that in other lessons. So, but in ransom, it's totally different. In ransom, you're released from the bondage of sin and death and the corrupting influence of lust in the world, like Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 1, through these succeeding great and precious promises. We have all things that pertain to life and godliness, so we can escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. Man is reconciled to God through repentance and faith proven by deeds, through the reconciliation, the return to favor. That's what it means. In Hebrews, it's called the mercy seat. You approach the mercy seat with the blood, sprinkling the blood of the sacrifice to be reconciled to God, to re be returned to favor. So you got ransom, release from bondage, release from corruption. That's what redemption means by ransom, reconciled to God through repentance and faith proven by deeds, and then following the example, example of Christ. In the penal model, you're no longer subject to the justice of God, 
because Christ obeyed in your place. So the responsibility of keeping his commandments or keeping yourself pure or guarding your heart, taking up your cross, all that other stuff, working out your salvation, it's all been removed by this moral transfer of Christ's virtue to you. So you see what happens under here, this representation model is nobody's getting saved. Because nobody's changing. Nobody, there's no change taking place. That's why so many people begin to wonder, well, what happened after I, I prayed the sinner's prayer or accepted Jesus as my personal Savior? Well, nothing happened. You didn't touch the blood. Now, we'll dwell into this more.